Okay, hi everybody. I'm the creator of the uh, ship that you're looking at right here. This is the SS Carl Sagan. It is a very civilian oriented research and exploration vessel. As you can see, the design aesthetic is kind of um, inside out. So basically all of the important components and, and devices and equipment is on the outside of the ship and the inside is where the habitation is. And you can see that there are these six uh, individual modules that are mounted on the outside. And then finally, the kind of uh, origin of this whole ship is the thing at the front here, which is the C835 carry-all dropship. So this is the thing that utilizes all of these modules. So you can see here that it's just mounted to the front of the front solar array with these two little connectors on the bottom. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, as you see along the ship here, we've got the rover module. So this is the module that um, you would typically, you know, be the first thing that you would drop onto a planet. Uh, it's got crew for realistically one person with a cryo bed, um, an actual bed. Uh, it's got, or sorry, it's got two beds, so it can take uh, two people. Um, and it has uh, containers, basic assemblers, basic refinery. It has a remote block and a laser antenna. So if you want to, you can try remote controlling it from, from space. It just will burn through its batteries pretty quick. It is pressurized um, and it has pretty much everything you need to start scouting out a, a landing site. And you can see here, here's the, the ladder to get inside. Now, if we go on the other side here, this is uh, one of the later modules that you'd probably want to drop. This is a, a garage module. So this module has two little ramps that drop down. It uses the frostbite gate. And then if you go inside, um, in here it's got an atmospheric uh, controlled um, mining vessel, which is just on a dummy connector. That connector is just for transferring electricity. And then the other module, it's empty, so you can build your own little rovers or, or ships in here. Um, and all these little containers have little little bits of tools and goodies that are spread all around. And each uh, side of the module can be pressurized individually. And then we go over to the next module here that's on the side. And this is the habitat module. So this would be kind of your forward operating base, your, your first real um, operation center that you would land on a planet. And if you go inside, um, it's got contracts and, and a store if you want to set it up as a permanent kind of like NPC base. But I just put it in there as directions or as decorations. We've got a little kitchen here. We've got the um, oxygen situation. A lot of these modules uh, use scripts. Um, uh, a lot of really great scripts like automatic um, LCD script, the, uh, uh, the obviously the VTOL script, which you'll see in a, in a bit, um, a WIPS Horizon script, WIPS VTOL script, or the sub, uh, sub thruster control script. Um, you can see here we've got readouts of all the ore, and then uh, we've got a full size medical room here, and then on the other side we have seven cryo beds for seven colonists. And then if we go outside here, and then on the other side here, we have the production module. So this is the module that you would drop to set up your mining operations. So it's got a large cargo container, but it also has collectors, uh, tons of assemblers, um, a big refinery with yield mod modules. Um, and then on the back here, you, we have um, hydrogen fuel tanks. So these are the tanks that would be used um, either for setting up a fuel dump or you can switch these off of stockpile and, and actually fuel this mothership for it. Um, the, as you can see on the, the dropship, it's got uh, quite a lot of large hydrogen thrusters. So you're gonna burn through a lot of hydrogen setting up your base. So I'd suggest being one of the earliest modules that you would land on the planet B, your hydrogen tank so that every time you go down, you can refill the ship and then come back up. And then of course, finally is uh, a cargo module and you can put quite a lot of cargo in here the carry-all can actually lift up to 5.8 kilotons of material from uh, Earth gravity, this is Mars, but Earth gravity up till space um, and still have like 25% hydrogen left in its tanks. Um, but you know, this is something you would set up for your mining operation. And then here's the main ship. So on the top here, we've got the uh, science module. It also got the name and registration plate. And on the back here, we have some uh, service vessels. We have a, a space-based mining vessel for asteroids. And then we have a welding vessel for doing any repairs. Um, no grinding vessel. 
Um, I thought about adding a, a, a grinding ship, but I just never got around to it. And then in here, we've got a uh, pressurized hangar bay, which is also the central junction of the ship. So I, I'm in uh, spectator mode, so I can't hit this button here. But in here, we've got a, an actual space tug. And on the back here, it's got two large ion thrusters for pushing. And then it also has multiple gyros that you can turn on to increase your gyro strength or turn off so it's not so twitchy. And then uh, we'll get to this in a minute. And on the bottom here, we have the uh, command module. So this is kind of where everybody lives on the ship. It's also where the bridge is. And on the bottom, we have the communication mast with the distress beacon, uh, antenna, backup antenna, oxygen farms on the back. Um, so we'll see the inside of that in just a bit. And then we've already been introduced to this part uh, along the back here. And then we have the ship's uh, own internal hydrogen tank. Well, internal. Like I said, it's designed to be kind of inside out, as well as an array of uh, jump drives. So you, with a fully loaded ship, you can get from planet to planet in about two jumps from, from Mars to Earth. Um, and it's got four jump drives so that you can queue them up or you can do a, a, a one big jump and, and uh, use up all your tanks or use up all your uh, air energy and then recharge. And then we've got two large uh, reactors here. Um, this is kind of the primary power of the ship um, when it's, you know, it's got to charge those jump drives, it's going to pull a lot of power. We've got two hydrogen tanks just for those thrusters back here. And then we've got four of these um, moved throughout the ship. These are battery banks, kind of like capacitors so that, uh, you know, when you're, you're not under heavy load, you know, the uh, solar panels in the front can uh, charge the batteries a little bit. Though I think a lot of systems are turned on right now, so we're probably losing power as we speak. So let's switch into first person mode and let's go on board the ship. So hopefully I don't uh, kill myself jetpacking too quickly. So at the front here, we've got the solar panels I mentioned. This uses, um, well, I can't remember who made it, but it's a, a script that when the rotors are turned on, the solar panels automatically track the sun. Actually, no, I think they're tracking it right now. And then we have a front communication mast. And this is the laser antenna that you would use to connect to um, anything that's on the planet. So you'd always want to make sure that you're pointed towards the planet so it gets a good view. And that's why it's out on this boom arm so that it has a good field of view. This is your retro thruster for slowing down. Uh, or you can spin the ship around, but it, it turns very slowly. And this is the dropship right at the front here. So it actually has hinges and rotors so that the thrusters can change from a horizontal to vertical configuration. And then it's mounted on these two little um, connectors here for when it's in transit. And there's also connectors on the bottom so that you could actually get a second one um, or some other alternative ship and have it mounted there. We've also got some turrets um, around the ship just for protecting against meteors and drones, but this is really not a combat vessel. So the primary kind of airlock is here at the front, and this is what you use to get the carry-all. But first, let's do a tour of the inside of the ship. So let's go in here. Now, I did add um, a very light um, artificial gravity, which is further down uh, this boom. So this way leads to the solar panel uh, array and the controls for it for the programmable block. This is an airlock that then travels down here, and this is the service corridor, and all these little things, you know, I, I put little little things inside each one of these things so I'll leave that for you to explore and then we can go down here and this is the first um, set of modules and you can actually access the modules in pressure uh, that door is turned off you have to kind of activate the door um, in the K menu to turn it on just so that it, people don't open it accidentally um, you have to put your jetpack on and turn sideways to get in here and this is you know we've got some lockers here and then from here you can actually um, turn on these module or uh, the merge blocks on and off and unlock the connector. So if you wanted to disconnect a module, you'd have to turn off the merge blocks and then disable the connectors so that it'll, it'll disconnect. And then we go further down here. This is the second set, so three and, and four of the modules and same controls here. And now we're in that main area, and now we're in variable gravity. So they're, uh, the ship's kind of designed to be as vaguely realistic. So this area is a zero-g area, and we can see that we can go up, which leads to the science module, or down, which leads to the command module, and, and down and up are kind of variable. Actually, let's go to the science module first. So we head here, and as we fall here, we fall into its gravity well. And we open this door. And here's kind of an explanation of what goes on in here. We've got kind of the, the medical bay 
which is also the science room. We've got some CT machines. We've got a full medical room, lockers, lots of exciting stuff. And then further down here, we've got the server room, which is where all the programmable programmable blocks and some of the timer blocks are. Um, and there's some spare timer blocks too. So not particularly a whole lot going on in the science module, but um, on the outside, uh, it's got refineries and assemblers that are mounted on the space side. So yeah, so then we can float up to the command module. And now that we're in the command module, you know, recreation, cafeteria, dorm rooms, cryopods, flight deck. So this is kind of the main rec area. Of course, we've got a bathroom. We've got a, a sound uh, a music box. We've got cola machines, contracts, and storage just because if somebody wanted to set this up as an NPC station, they could. We've got just a kind of general loadout of our location, oxygen situation, and power. They also seem to be watching 2010, which is not that great of a movie, but uh, it's an okay movie, but it's not a good sequel. And you can kind of see where the inspiration for the ship design came from. Um, as we go further down into the ship, we've also got the dormitories, which we've got six beds for three crew members of the carryall, three crew members of the Carl Sagan, like the, the ship that we're on right now. Um, and then we go further down and we have cryopods, which are supposed to be for the colonists. So we've got six cryopods. And then we've got the main flight deck. So this is the main controls of the ship. Down here is kind of a, a little meeting area and we've got a star map. So this is another script and it shows that we're at Mars right now. And then the, the logo of, of the organization that created the ship. So we've got here, this is kind of power control. So if we turn it on, we can, or not power control, systems control. So we can turn on and off all the merge blocks, the weapon systems and the connectors. And then over here, we've got actually a radar view and we can turn on the rotors for the solar panel system. We can also turn the assemblers on and off, which I'm actually turn them off just to help our power. And we can turn off recharge on the jump drives. And we can actually see up here the conditions of all our merge blocks and connectors. Um, and this is the main cockpit. So we've got this first trigger on the timer block actually raises up the display so that you can see through the windscreen or we can lower it down and, and turns on all the displays or we can see our oxygen situation the ship's uh, relative or not relative the ship's current mass our location in space our uh, velocity vector our power situation our jump drive charge state our speed acceleration and stop time and stop distance for calculating approaches to planets and then we have a main radar screen that kind of tells us if there's anything out there or the condition or positions of all of our modules and then we've got all the default screens down here then on the, the bar, I've already showed you the timer block for raising and lowering the screen. We've also got the antenna, turn that on and off. We've got a distress signal that we could put out. We can activate or deactivate our ion thrusters to kind of help with our power, power consumption. We can activate our hydrogen thrusters to give us, you know, okay acceleration for a ship this size. Um, turn that back off. And then of course we've got our, our jump drives. And then on the second tab, nothing. I try and avoid putting things on the second tab just so that every console has something so that when you're in in flight you know you have to jump between consoles or you know you have people with you um, and this of course is the main cockpit and you can see i'm holding down the arrow key doesn't exactly turn um super quickly but it's not designed to you kind of you point it in a direction you keep on that direction so let's go and take a module down so we'll go up and we'll actually use the um, airlock this time, or the hangar airlock this time. So let me just make sure my visor's down. It is down. Uh, go up here. Go to open hangar. And then it depressurizes this room, or it would depressurize if all the oxygen tanks weren't already full. Opens up. And then we've got these little anti-collision strobes to let us know that the doors are open. We could take the tug out. We might not need it. And then what you would normally do is you would walk down the length of the service uh, corridor, come through this airlock, and then uh, spacewalk out over to the side of the carryall. And this is kind of the, the centerpiece of this whole set. So we go in, and now we're on board the carryall. Now, if you're using the DLC or the DLC free version, it won't have this locker. It'll just have a regular container. And then we've kind of got a, a manifest of everything on board. We have cryo beds for three crew members if you are doing a, a deep space voyage, because of course the carryall is also capable of doing interplanetary travel. 
We've got access to the timer blocks. We've got its two small reactors. Uh, close the airlock. This is the WIPS uh, control script for uh, controlling the subgrid thrusters. And we've got a uh, basic assembler and refinery just for doing repairs. Here are some more programmable blocks for some of the subsystems. Um, and then this is kind of two LCD uh, tutorial guides just kind of giving you little tips about how to operate the ship. Then we've got the mission systems officer, the flight engineer, and of course the main pilot. But the main pilot doesn't have a whole lot of instrumentation until you press this button. And then all the systems come down. So on the left here, we've got kind of the conditions of most of the systems, which of course, because we're connected to the mothership, it's showing us everything right now. Um, and our oxygen situation, our ammo situation, our airlock situation. Uh, here we've got the mass of the ship, which of course is combining um, the mothership. Actually, let's disconnect before we go through these systems. So I'm going to go on to the main pilot and command station, turn on the HUD so I can see what I'm doing, and uh, let's just hit P, disconnect our connectors, press 7 to activate our small thrusters, and whoop, hit P again just because of the, the magnetism. And now we're separated. So now our systems should be accurate. So yeah, so we can see a damage situation, oxygen situation, um, our systems, our doors, cryo chambers, ship mass, we're very light. Uh, this ship is designed to be as light as possible. So all the mass goes into carrying uh, modules. Uh, manifest, thrust vector, short range radar, um, reactor power situation, gravity situation, jump drive charge. Location, general systems, uh, ship mass, uh, parachutes. We have emergency parachutes. If you're descending too quickly, you can activate them. And power situation. And then on the uh, mission systems, we can control the weapons, uh, antennas, laser antennas, gravities, um, the assemblers, refineries, and charging of the jump drive. Flight engineer can control the uh, individual thruster systems. We're currently got the small hydrogen thrusters active. We can also set the tanks to stockpile for refueling, uh, locking and unlocking the connectors. We've got ore detectors, refinery or um, reactors, and battery. And then, of course, on the main flight station, this is the primary um, command deck. So we've got on the first action bar on the timer block is how we switch to uh, vertical mode which is how I suggest actually uh, grabbing a module off the ship. It just keeps all of the uh, thrust nacelles away from the mothership so you don't bang into anything. And then we've got a remote block, which I'll show how that works in a bit. We've got the connectors, which are the uh, uh, cargo or the uh, module connectors. We've got the landing gear switch. We've got lights, um, which are actually going to be useful in a minute. We've got the um, Atmospheric thrusters, which are really there just as a little boost um, if you're overweight and you're trying to get off the planet. And of course, we've got the jump drive and we've got the large thrusters. Now, when the large thrusters are active, you'll actually run out of fuel pretty quick. And then over here, we've got a timer block for just controlling the uh, screens from the seat. We've got an alert block on the end there, which I'm not going to turn on. It just activates all the weapons. Um, and then we've got thrust overrides so that you can kind of manually control your speed um, on ascent. And the thrust override only runs for the two rear engines because the script overwrites the uh, thrust overrides in order to do the vectoring. So let's grab a module. Let's uh, let's start with the rover module. That seems to be a popular one. So we'll orient ourselves over. Make sure that we're clear. We're not going to bang into anything. And just to be nice to the, the rover, we'll face in the right direction for the rover, so its front is our front. Yeah, so we want to line ourselves up. Now, this is a lot easier. You'll see in a minute when we have two crew members, but we might have to jump back and forth between the carryall and the mothership. So we'll kind of, in this view, kind of vaguely get ourselves aligned. OK, we're kind of in the ballpark. Then we'll switch to our remote block, switch to our camera. And this is the camera that's looking straight down out of the module, and you'll see that this interior pillar is actually lined up with the lights on the battery. Now, the controls are 90 degrees off because forward is the forward of the view, so it just takes a little bit of um, wrapping your brain around it. But yeah, you'll want to make sure that those two white dots are lined up with either sides of the pillar and that everything's vertical. Whoops, sorry, I have a, a glitchy laser mouse that likes to move sometimes. Um, yeah, 
get ourselves lined up. Gently just tap our way in. You'll feel the connectors lock. Lock the connectors. Get out of the remote block and you can see we're probably well connected. So let's go outside. Yep, and we have connection. Both connectors are nicely attached. So now we need to go on board the mothership to break the connector. So let's just check just to be sure that this is connector module two. So we'll want to disconnect number two. Oop. I always forget to repressurize this, but whatever. Okay. And there we go. So number two is the one we want to disconnect. So module one, module two, disconnect. It is uh, takes a minute to update off and then unlock the connectors. The every connector is unlocked. And then we can go back. And these doors will close automatically if it depressurizes. So it should anyway. It didn't. <laughs> I guess some of them aren't hooked up. Okay, and then we'll go out here and we can see that there's now the proximity light is on. So this little light will activate when it uh, detects a ship or a large grid being here. And you can see that the merge blocks are off. So let's, oops, get on board. Oh, and I hit myself on something. Close that. Just got a little bit of health from the uh, survival kit that's here. That's probably enough. Oops, and I fell down into the surface uh, corridor. Okay, so now we are disconnected. We can lift away. And now we can switch to horizontal flight. And let's find a landing site. Let's, uh, well, we're not going to make it to that unknown signal, but we'll line up with it anyway. And we'll hit max speed and turn off our dampeners and let ourselves glide down to the surface. Um, as we start getting lower, we switch to vertical mode. We activate our big thrusters. Now, we probably don't need this much braking force because the rover is quite light, but just to kind of show what you would do on a heavy landing. And then, uh, oh boy, the lightning is getting a little bit angry. Um, as we get kind of within a couple of thousand feet, we want to level off and have our horizon level. And then uh, I'm going to cut it kind of close. You could probably start it earlier, but I'm trying to save on gas. So keep ourselves nice and level. Maybe when we get to, let's say, a thousand feet, we'll turn on our dampeners. Oh yeah, we're diving right into a, a sandstorm. Yep, turn on our dampeners and just give it a little tap. And another little tap. And this is why we want our lights on. Uh, keep giving it. We don't want to be hitting the ground more than five meters a second. Um, I'm actually going to uh, use admin tools to turn the storm off because it's making this a little bit more annoying than it needs to be. Uh, remove leather. There we go. Yeah, just let's, you can do it in a sandstorm. I don't recommend it. Yeah, so as you can see, oh, we would have smashed right into that ridge anyway. As we get lower, let's just actually land up here where it's a little bit flatter. Yeah. And you can see our forward braking is not so great, so you can kind of tip forward to kind of um, slow down a bit just to use your big thrusters. And then give ourselves another little, another little tap. Tappy tap. Tappy tap. Yep, and tappy, tappy, tap. And we're down. Yep, and then what you can do is we press three, disconnect our connectors, and we lift away, and our rover is now successfully landed. Okay, so now we're back, and I've just done a little bit of spawning. I have put in to this container a gargantuan amount of, let me just hide empty, a absolutely gargantuan amount of uranium. Um, in fact, we're a little bit overweight actually, uh, but we're on Mars, so it'll make it 
more doable. But we're actually going to ascend um, at max weight. So we can see here we are at um, 6.8 kilotons, which is, um, I believe, 0.2 kilotons overweight. Um, and we're going to try and get back to the carryall, which I don't think I remember to put a GPS coordinate for. So that'll make it interesting. But it was straight up, straight up to space. So if we're going to take off at max weight, very important. We have to make sure all of our thrusters are on, especially our atmospheric thrusters, because we'll need the boost. Make sure our gear is unlocked and hold that down. And the second we get a positive rate of climb, we really want to make sure we're perfectly level. Everything's level because we want our thrust vector pointed absolutely straight down. Oh, it's a lot easier to take off from Mars than it is from, from Earth. Um, so this test is a little bit um, easier than it would be on Earth. But yeah, so we want to take off straight. And then once we get maybe half the speed, so 50 meters per second and around 1,000 feet, we will want to, I'll have to do this in third person so you can see, we'll want to then hit our transition button. And as we transition, tip up immediately. And just so we always keep our thrusters pointed straight down, and then we will take off to space. Once we hit max speed, we'll want to let go of the thrust because we never want to actually hit the speed limit because if we're hitting the speed limit, we're just burning fuel for the sake of burning fuel. Uh, I want to get out of some of the gravity. So we're still at maximum planetary gravity. So I don't want to use the thrust override just yet. Um, and we kind of took off with only about 80% fuel, I believe. And you can see that this thing is just absolutely chewing through all the fuel because we're so heavy. Okay, now we're starting to leave gravity, so I'm going to switch to override. And maximum, maximum override. Um, still weren't far enough. We basically want maximum override to have a positive, like we want to be accelerating um, with override. Otherwise, we're not uh, utilizing it correctly. So we're still in a little bit too much gravity. So we'll just have to keep giving ourselves little pulses. Oh, and I had the I had the dampeners on. You want to make sure your dampeners are off too, because if your dampeners are on, then every time you let go of the thrust, it'll waste fuel slowing you down. Um, yeah, we're lifting away. Um, I knew that the carryall was somewhere near the moon, so we'll just head towards the moon. Or sorry, the mothership, the Carl Sagan, somewhere near the moon. Uh, got our thrust override going. Basically, I want to have that override at a point where, just on override, that we're accelerating, and then we can uh, stop using um, the pulses. I think, did I turn off the antenna as I have, as I took off? This is another important thing that you'll want to consider. Um, make sure that you're, you drop a GPS coordinate <laughs> before you go there. Let me just increase my antenna range. See if I can pick up the Carl Sagan on radio. No. I know it's between the uh, Mars and the moon, so. We'll just keep heading in that general direction and hopefully pick up the uh, antenna. Okay, so it took a little bit of... Uh, wandering around in the darkness of space, but I was eventually able to find the Carl Sagan again and burn through pretty much all of my hydrogen. So I have 0.9% hydrogen. Um, I had a little bit of ice in my um, player inventory, so it's filling back up. Um, so this will be very interesting. How do I get to the Sagan without any fuel? So I think my first order of business will be to kind of line up with it and very quickly turn on my thrusters, give myself a little bit of a boost, and then turn them back off. Okay, I had to grab some ice from the mothership because <laughs> we ran out of fuel just as I was coming up. Um, but now we have hopefully 4% fuel is enough to get us docked. So we're going to put this cargo on the module um, 
mount that we took the rover from. I'm just going to turn my tanks off of stockpile. I was just turning them on stockpile to save on fuel while the uh, ice generators or, or the O2 generators are running. I'm going to activate the small thrusters to save on fuel and keep dampeners off. Line myself up just in front of it and then give ourselves just a touch of speed. Now the tricky thing is, is we're so, so heavy that accelerating um, is going to be tricky. And let's activate our dampeners to bring us back down in speed. Now there's the tug over there. Um, it's always good to hear the little clanging and clunking of the ship. Oh, seems like we slowed down more than I intended us to, so let's... Get back up to speed. We've got 3.5. Just our thrusters idling is enough for us to burn through a lot of fuel. Yeah, 3.4. Not running the thrusters at all. And the 3.3. Yeah. So let's get us over top of the... Doing this with dampeners off just to save on fuel economy. See if we can get back to the station. Or get back to the mothership. 2.7. 2.6. Just going to cut thrusters, save on fuel. Turn dampeners back on so when I activate the thrusters it'll bring us to a stop. Looks like we're descending a bit is okay because I think we're gonna are we gonna clear uh, maybe not turn thrusters back on give us a little bit of a up boost oh yeah I had the dampeners on okay and of course the module uh, merge blocks are set to off I'm just gonna get us over top this is a lot easier when you're not carrying like such a incredibly heavy amount of cargo, but uh, we are definitely at max weight. So let's get our connectors in the right zone and hit the dampeners. I'm actually going to remote into the Sagan uh, and turn on those merge blocks again. So module, oop, module two merge blocks. Turn those back on, and then hopefully with some fuel to spare, I can get us onto the mount. Oh boy, it's cutting it right to the wire. Yep, okay, we have, we're in the magnetic field. Push down, push down, and we're on. And now, cut our thrusters, switch to stockpile, and our hydrogen is filling right back up. So we can come here, take a look at our tanks. Onboard tanks are filling right back up. Yep, um, it seems that the tanks pretty much fill immediately. So, go here, turn our thrusters back on, disconnect our cargo thrusters, and, oh, and then, whoops, I need to turn stockpile off. There we go. There we go. And we're free. And now we've brought a ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous amount of uranium. Um, I believe, if my math's right, 5.8 kilotons of cargo from the surface of Mars to space. So thanks for uh, watching this video. I hope you enjoy this vessel. Oh, I'm upside down. hope you enjoy this vessel um, and use it to create your own planetary outposts and colonies and you know make your own modules that 
can fit onto these mounts and that can be carried by the dropship and post them on uh, the workshop and share them with the community. Thanks.